The Mooncool MC3 is a dual motor fat tire electric bike with 1300 watts of peak power output. And in today's video, we're gonna see if it's worth the on sale price of $1,500. We'll check out the top speed, the acceleration, we'll test the range, and I'll tell you everything you need to know about this bike before you buy it, or if you should. Yeah, that was satisfying. Here's what it looks like in the box. The first thing I'm noticing is a little bit different tread pattern on these tires. That'll be my leg workout for the day. Yeah, dude, check it out. Oh my goodness, the chair. I just broke my chair, man. This chair is from like 1970. I love that set. The tires are this brand. Slightly different tread pattern than we see on a typical Kenda or Chow Yang tire. Curious to see how it'll feel in the real world. It's got disc brakes with slotted rotors. They appear to be 180 millimeters to me, although it doesn't say. But obviously the biggest thing to be noted on this motor is the Mooncool 500 watt hub motor for the front wheel. I chose to get the red frame. It's like a flat red and frankly, I like it. The brakes are Star Union. They are hydraulic, good sign. And around back, of course, we get another 500 watt nominal hub motor. These motors can run more than 500 watts. That's just how much power they're rated to accept continuously from the battery and controller. Moan cool. Battery is frame integrated from the bottom. Let's see what we get to charge it. Charger is two amp charger. Battery is, where's the keys at? Where are the keys at? Not seeing the keys yet. Oh, I'm a dummy. Here they are. Battery is 48 volt, 14.5 amp hour, basically 700 watt hours of energy. Pretty decent middle of the road battery. If a 15 amp hour battery was completely dead, it'd take seven and a half hours to charge to full from empty with a two amp charger, 15 divided by two. Fortunately, they don't ship it completely dead. It looks like it's about 75%, which is great because I want to get out and ride soon. When that light turns green, we'll be ready to roll. Check out the seat. Relatively wide seat. There's the length of seat post. What is the thickness? In case you want to put a suspension seat post on here, 30.4 millimeters is the width you're looking for. Because there is no rear suspension on this bike. We'll take a look at the front suspension in a moment. There is a quick release lever to easily adjust the height. Here's the front fork, e 4 t 8 o Stantons are thick. Get a preload on the left. And on the right shoulder, you get a basic open or lock. Handlebars are flat, mountain bike style. It'll help you lean a little bit more forward so you can put more power to the pedals. Grips are round and rubber. Thumb throttle is on the left. Turn that display on in a few. Bell. And seven gears on the A2 shifter. Star Union brake levers seem to be decent. Like how it's got that little thing to hook into your finger. Very mountain bike style setup. These bikes that have the motor on the front wheel are always a little bit harder to put on. So you gotta, you gotta line this up just right. Ah, nice. It's almost like I'm getting good at this. A 17 millimeter bolt holds that all in place. Nothing too interesting about the pedals. Four mounting points here. And this one did not come with fenders or a rack, but if you want to add that, you can. Headlight integrates into the battery. Tail light runs on its own. Oh no. Batteries. Super heavy duty batteries. Which means there will not be a brake light and you turn it on and off like that. So you can charge the battery off the bike and if you want to charge it on the bike there's your port for that. But if you decide a single battery isn't enough for you you can do a second battery running it through this port here. There's the connector type for you. For the record this is a large frame 18 inch. But before I hop on it let's take a look at the other side. Decent weight to this thing. Chain ring on front makes it look suitable for lower speed pedaling rather than high. And on the rear we get a Shimano cassette with seven cogs. Same A2 derailleur on the rear. There is no derailleur guard, so careful not to knock this one over and, you know, knock that out of alignment. Tires call for 20 PSI, which out of the box they are 18.5, which I can actually appreciate a lot because that means the tire is beaded properly. So I can appreciate that. I mean, I got it all set up. I gotta add a little bit of air, right? So let's get that battery on there. Smooth. Let's see what we're working with here. Hold down that M button. So we've seen this display before. So it shows us how much battery we have and potential power output. Miles per hour and current. So yeah, power current probably there. And we get an odometer. Trip. Voltage of the battery. So 49.5 volts. This thing's only like 60% charged right now. Need, need to get that up to about 54.6. And current. So I love that we get... Oh, whoa, we had a lot more stuff there. What was that? RM. What is that? and T to time. So I, my favorite ones here is uh, battery voltage. So you know exactly where your battery's at and 
current, you know, your power. And I'm curious what this is gonna be. So we get uh, how many levels of pedal assist here? Five, indicated by bars, and you can turn it completely off. And then of course, this is a dual motor electric bike. So you have uh, your options there for rear, front, or dual. Excellent. With the seat on max height, here's what a six foot five dude looks like getting on this bike. Here's where my pedal stroke will be. You could put a longer seat post in this if you want to get more of an extension as a tall dude. Bike is probably slightly small for me. Well, bike isn't. And here is my riding position. I believe I do have this bike in a step through frame. And with the seat on minimum height, here's what I look like on the bike. In general, or of an aggressive riding position as opposed to like a cruiser laid back position. Which is what you want for a mountain bike style bike. I believe you hold the plus button here to turn on the headlight. Yes, sir. Here's what it looks like on the wall and on my other bikes over there. A little bit of shiny, shiny. And I believe you can hold this down button for uh, a walk mode. Oh yeah, turn it off. So let's see what happens if we put it on rear and give it full throttle. Let's try that front motor. Same deal. Let's see if I can get these both going. Oh yeah, there we go. <sighs> no more skid marks on the floor. Yes, they have the step over as well as the step through frame on this bike in different colors too. Well, uh, went and got some food and uh, <laughs> made the mistake of, well, you can see what happened. Somebody fell through the chair. It was not good. Ride food. Let's take the Moon Cool MC3 out for a ride. We'll bring the instruction manual. Maybe we can get in there and increase the top speed. This is the G51 display. You can uh, just go ahead and ignore that bike right now. Nothing to see there. Nothing to see there. And you already know we're going to track our official distance so we can get a range on this. Whoa. Whoa, bike. So the first test we're gonna try is the 20% grade. Let's go ahead, put it on pedal assist five on front motor only throttle only, no pedaling. Let's just see what it can do with front motor only. Uh, let's see, what does it show us? Our watts here, current. It's not giving us a current readout for the front motor, but it's actually uh, losing traction. We're getting up the hill with the front motor only on this bike. And that was with absolutely no pedaling. Let's go ahead and try it with rear motor only now. It should be a little bit better because we got a little more traction to just the rear motor uh, showing 19 amps of current, 19 amps of current. So 19 times about 54 is the power output. And this bike can actually make it up with just single motor. Brake levers are not quite my exact favorite feel, but they definitely work. So now let's ride this bike how you would actually use it. So uh, both motors, full throttle. And yeah, I feel that torque kicking in a lot more. Still showing 18 amps of current, but man, you can see this thing can climb hills. And that was with absolutely no pedaling and I weigh 200 pounds. Let's go ahead and try out the drive modes now. Put this thing down to pedal assist zero. It does absolutely nothing on pedal assist zero. Bump it onto pedal assist one here. Look at that M4. Pedal assist one will give you full access to the throttle. So this thing brings us straight up to basically 19 miles an hour. Well, let's go ahead and give it a try on zero, just pedaling. Uh, so, you know, it's never fun to ride a fat tire e-bike without using the power. You can do it, it can get you home. I'm going about four miles an hour. Let's try pedal assist one. So this is a cadence sensor, I believe. And it'll bring us up to about 10 miles an hour. And it's a comfortable cadence here, even on gear number one, but I can bump it up to about gear number three. So after you hit about 10 miles an hour, it will completely cut you off. Let's try pedal assist two. So that gives us a decent little bump in power there up to 13 miles an hour before it cuts us off. And let's try pedal assist three from a stop here. So. Oh yeah, power kicks right in there. Shows you on the power meter uh, how much power you're getting. And now I'm in gear number six going 15 miles an hour. Cuts you off at about 15. Pedal assist four, not much of a difference there on four. 16 miles an hour. And pedal assist five gives you power up to the max speed of 20. In which case now I shifted to gear number seven. And this bike set up pretty well for a 20 mile an hour bike. The cadence at 20 miles an hour on top gear feels uh, just fine, perfect really. And definitely like I mentioned earlier in the review, uh, more of a mountain biking position. Puts you a little bit forward on the handlebars to help you get, you know, in more of a position to put power down to the pedals. Get a little bit of exercise in on your ride. So it is a cadence sensor, meaning if you're on say pedal assist five here, starting from a stop, you can just kind of ghost pedal. I'm actually not putting any power down to the pedals and it'll uh, just rocket me up to 20 and then cut me out. Dude, we gotta see what that bike is up there. That is a gas powered bike turning around. Check it out, dude. It's a G bike. 
I want to get one of those on the channel. Would you guys want to see that? I was thinking about it this summer. I just never got to it. So it is a mountain bike. So maybe this is intended to do a little bit of off-road riding. It does have front suspension with an open and close. Uh, no micro adjustments on that and no rear suspension. However, you could, uh, you know, add a suspension seat post on this bike and get a little bit of cush back there. Make a huge difference. Now let's get out here in traffic just a little bit. Uh, We'll see about unlocking the top speed here later, but we're gonna be capped at 20 miles an hour for now. So if you intend on doing a lot of street riding, um, 20 miles an hour isn't really the greatest because it's hard to keep up with traffic. However, cruising at slower speeds, you will get much more range out of your battery because it really does take exponential energy to hit, you know, say 28 miles an hour compared to like 20 miles an hour. It probably takes twice as much power to go 28 than 20. Regardless, we'll try and see what we can do to kind of navigate through traffic here a little bit see if we can survive another day out here in LA get a little lane splitting in here I think 20 should be fine for this corner you can feel a little bit of weight you know because it's got that uh, hub motor on the front so there is a significant difference in the way a dual motor or single motor e-bike handles it's really that rotational unsprung mass you can feel with the uh, hub motor on front and rear and then the big tires as well it's not bad but you know riding a lot of e-bikes you can tell a difference between the two styles so we'll go ahead and give it a little 0 to 20 acceleration test throttle only I weigh 200 pounds GPS in the right hand thumb throttle on the left ready go so it gives you that power immediately showing 6 10 15 16 18 20 pretty much it tapers off the power there towards the end so it doesn't quite show 20 on either uh, but regardless you know this thing accelerates pretty quickly being that it puts down power to two wheels and a little brake dust here <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, I'd say this thing accelerates quite a bit faster than a typical single motor, 750 watt hub drive motor. And then the trade-off is, well, there's a lot of trade-offs, you know, weight and, uh, you know, traction, hill climbing ability. We'll try it on the sand here just a little bit. I bet you it'll do pretty well. I always like to check the display, see if you can see the display through polarized lenses. I don't know, can you? I haven't checked yet. Oh yeah, you can. Excellent. Man, if you thought this bike was big, look at the size of this bike up here in the bike lane. So out of the box, this thing is a 20 mile an hour bike, but I did look up the manual and it is possible to increase the top speed on this. I don't encourage this. I'm just doing a bike review, dude. Default password on mine is all nines. Tab on over to P8 and the speed limit is set to 32 out of the box. Looks like it'll go all the way up to 99 kilometers an hour. So we'll go ahead and give it a rip from a dig here and see what kind of top speed it can hit on dual motor. Oh, we should probably put on Pell Assist 5. 16, 19. It is going over 20 now, 23. And it's cutting us off at about 24 miles an hour on throttle. What if I pedal a little bit? It appears to be just uh, kind of cutting us off at about 24 miles an hour. Unless maybe if we change the wheel diameter settings. Wheel unit is on P6. So we could change this from uh, 28.7. Actually, it's not letting us change it. So unless you can figure something else out in the settings here, uh, about 24 will be your max speed on this bike. And before we get this thing out and ride it on the sand on dual motor, let's go ahead and see how it rides on a uh, single motor here. So we got it on pedal assist three. I really can't tell a huge difference between like single motor and dual motor. Like it still gives you 20 miles an hour and like it's still pretty powerful. Let's try front motor. Front wheel drive like a front wheel drive car now. Dual motor, I mean, it makes a difference in the acceleration for sure. Wait a second, dude, is that an actual seal? Out there let's go ahead and try this on the sand a little earlier than i was expecting shift down a couple gears here uh wait which way is the glitch here oh my goodness dude that is an actual freaking seal i'm pretty sure or is that a what is that thing even called a sea lion there's a uh, bugs on that thing how how did a sea lion get all the way over here like from all the way over by the ocean wow i've never seen this before in uh los angeles it smells dude that's real anyway hopping on oh god that smells bad hopping on this thing um clearly we can see has the benefits of a fat tire all-wheel drive e-bike uh hardly any e-bikes can start from a stop in the sand and just take off like that all right let's go ahead and give it a little bit of an ultimate test going up this hill for starters so Throttle only. Yeah, dude, we're, we're tearing right through this, no problemo. Oh, yeah. I guess we should probably just take it straight on out there. So this is gonna be a bit of a challenge for any bike, but full throttle. Thumb almost uh, slipped off the throttle there, but man, yeah, this thing is just decimating 
the sand. So the 26 inch tall, four inch wide fat tires are like particularly excellent for riding on uh, sand. Hardly any bikes can just like rip through like soft pack sand like this. But this one, as you can see, is just dominating easily. It only takes 500 watts nominal front and rear and <laughs> I mean, some soft tires, dude. Oh, it's a little bit bumpy though, because it is uh, only front suspension instead of uh, full suspension. Like I mentioned, you could throw a uh, rear suspension seat post on this thing, no problem at all. So let's keep pushing it here a little bit. This is uphill. I have not pedaled at all um, in the sand yet. Might need to pedal a little bit here, going like basically uphill in the sand. Oh yeah, dude, this is uh, this puts this is pretty much like the harshest conditions you could give any e-bike period i had to put my foot down a little bit lost my balance but yeah dude this thing if you're looking for something that can do something like this not a ton of bikes can do this <laughs> it's going it's going what are we going to do swim or surf or e-bike all right i've been cruising out here for a minute let's see if this thing can rip on back to the sand out of here back to you man that's gonna be a long way through all this but we'll give it a try see how this motor holds up because this is some very soft sand i'm just gonna start pedaling a little bit Probably not even helping it much at all, but yeah, <laughs> this thing is, this is kind of fun, man. This is like riding on some fresh groomed snow or something out here. <laughs> Butter's holding up fine. I wish it gave us a power out. Oh, camera just cut out there. <laughs> Bike did not cut out. Uh, I wish it gave us a power output. Uh, it just gives us current, but whatever. Oh no, dude. I just realized I freaking forgot my backpack like a mile back here when I went to put this in here. I really hope it's there when I get back. I have batteries, equipment, money. Dude, I'm so anxious coming around this corner. Is it gonna be there or not? Ah, oh, heck yeah, dude. Got lucky today, boys. Real question is, is the money gonna still be in here? Oh yeah, dude, that's what I'm talking about. On with the show. Let's go try it on this tough hill. Put gear one, get a little bit of a roll out. Oh my goodness, I'm nervous. I have an dual motor, I think. Uh. <laughs> Probably just not quite. Yeah, that was dual motor. Maybe with a little more skill. The good news is I can just tap that throttle just a little bit and get on up here. Whoa. Ready to go. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, this, this hill is pretty darn steep. So let's run it up the California incline. It's a 12% grade, 85 foot climb. Then we'll test the brakes and see what the final range is. I had to tap on the brakes there a little bit. Once again, this thing is yeah, pretty pretty monster uh, climber. Just kind of tapping on the throttle here on and off just a little bit. Again, a little bit lethargic in the uh, handling department. Not bad, but you know, just relative to a bike that does not have a tire on the front. Or a motor on the front, 12 miles an hour, 15, 18, 19, maxed out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I did not see anywhere in the user manual how to unlock the top speed to make it go faster. I know that you could get in here and modify the wheel diameter. If you know how to, uh, you know, tinker with the G51 display, you could probably unlock all that stuff. Battery is showing 45.1 volts under voltage sag at the top of the California incline under full throttle. If anybody's actually new here, we were just down there on the bike path. So these star union brakes are new to me. I have not tried these levers before. The brakes themselves feel nice. I mean, they are hydraulic. They have 180 millimeter rotors. Uh, and yeah, they bring the bike to a stop. The levers don't feel the greatest to me. They're a little bit pointy. Honestly, if you just got this bike and never tried any other brake levers, you'd probably be 100% cool with them. I mean, I'm 100% cool with them. I just kind of prefer a thicker grip personally. So let's say you get yourself in a bit of a situation and you need to come to a stop quickly from 20. See how they do. Oh yeah, dude, they're good brakes, man. <laughs> Just the levers are just a little bit pointy, but they are hydraulic and they are 180 millimeter rotors. So uh, they're smooth, linear, good stopping power. Really all you can ask for. Uh, yeah, apparently you can adjust the wheel diameter as well as the maximum speed setting. It's not really clear on how to do that. So I think this thing would definitely probably go like probably 28 miles an hour if you could unlock it. So apparently there is a cruise control feature on this bike. Oh, you're good. What you do is hold the minus button for four seconds, it says in the manual. So let's see if it works. And we are indeed on cruise control, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not pedaling, not using the throttle, cruising it. 13 miles an hour. I might uh, just cruise along here and hang out on the beach for a bit. <laughs> so final thoughts on the Mooncool MC3. I mean, it's a $2,000 electric bike. It is on sale right now for $1,500. And the link below this video 
in the description box. Of course, if you did buy through that link down below, it would help support my reviews on this channel, and I would greatly appreciate your support. But final thoughts on this bike, I mean, you know, for 1500 bucks, I really don't feel like it's a bad deal at all. Uh, it's a pretty clean looking bike, clean looking all wheel drive electric bike. I've reviewed some other all wheel drive electric bikes that were not put together nearly as nicely as this one. It's got plenty of power. Uh, one, you know, kind of downside is it is 20 miles an hour, but that, you know, the upside is, is it makes it kind of like a class two electric bike in terms of speed. So, you know, it'd be more legal and more places to ride this bike. And also you're gonna end up getting a lot more range out of that uh, battery by not going over 20 miles an hour. Cause that's where you really start to lose a ton of your range going, you know, 20 to 28 miles an hour. I wish it gave us the power output um, on here. And right now it's showing 47.8 volts, which is basically 50% on the battery. So we'll head on home, see what the final range is on this thing. But uh, in general, it's a fun bike pretty well put together. I don't really have anything bad to say about it. 1500 bucks seems like a fair price to me for this bike. So if you do want to grab one, buy through the link below, support my reviews on this channel. Well, let's go see what the final range is. All right, dudes, just crossed over 19 miles, about an hour, 37 minutes out there today. Range is showing 46.7 volts, saying about just under half, which I would agree with. Uh, 48 volts is about halfway point on a 48 volt battery. And I was really putting this thing through its paces, you know, getting out there, hooning, riding in the soft pack sand. That really puts a lot of strain on the on the motors and the battery and i did a little bit of pedaling today but largely throttle so i'd say the way i rode today you know realistic range expectation would be uh just over 30 miles maybe 35 miles you know just kind of depends and of course this bike does have the easy plug-in adapter if you want to add a second battery to basically double your range of course you know you'd be adding about eight to ten pounds of extra weight to the bike all around good bike i had a great time on this bike today i think it's a pretty solid performer and if you do want to grab one buy it through the 